What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp layout tutorial for you. In this video we're going to talk about a couple different ways to create a hatching pattern um, in your models that you take over to layout. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this is an area where um, you have to kind of find some workarounds in order to do this. Um, there's, there's not a super great way to just take hatch patterns and put them on your walls. Um, a lot of the time you want to hatch your walls so you can indicate that you've got like a section cut on them or something like that. That. So I'm going to teach you three different ways to do this and they all kind of have their place. So the first way, and uh, again, I'm kind of building on some of the stuff that I've done before, so I'll, I'll link to my uh, layout playlist up above, so if you've missed any of those tutorials, um, you can go ahead and watch those in order to kind of get caught up. Um, in this case, what we've got is we've got kind of our house that has our working scene in here. Um, I've already created the views for the floor plans with the different line weights and that sort of thing and the section cuts And now we're just going to come in here and we're going to apply some uh, patterns And so there's three different ways that we're going to talk about the first way is when you have this kind of linked up in layout What you can do is you can uh, manually apply this inside of layout so you it's got different pattern fills kind of built in that you can work with so up here in your styles or in your shape styles, you can draw a shape that has a pattern in it. Like for example, if I draw a rectangle, if I apply this pattern to it, it's going to fill this in using that pattern. So you can definitely do that. And then you can come into the pattern fills and there's a whole bunch of different pattern fills that you can uh, work with. You know, you can come in and you can apply these different materials into shapes that you draw. Unfortunately, there is no paint bucket fill. So I can't come in here and just fill this in in layout, unfortunately. So what you can do though, is you can um, come in here and draw a shape on top of an object and then uh, just tell it to fill in that shape with a pattern. So what you do is in this case, since none of these are strictly rectangular, they're more just kind of walls that go all the way around here, I'm going to use the line tool to kind of trace them in. And uh, one of the keys to this is you're going to want to put these on their own layer. So, and we can do that in a second, or let's go ahead and do it now. So all we're going to do is we're just going to add a layer and we'll just call it hatching and then select that layer to make sure that we're drawing on it and then all we're going to do is we're just going to trace this shape so select the pattern fill that you want so go up to your shape style pick a pattern um, in this case I'm going to use this brick common face and then you can just click and you can see how this kind of locks to your corners so that makes this easy but you can come in here and you can just kind of trace over this so that you can have a so that you can have this pattern in your model so and this is pretty cumbersome um, it's a little slow you're basically having to come in here and trace on top of your or draw your walls again in a way so um, it's not necessarily my preferred way of doing this um, you can see you can click on this you can kind of move it around um, you're basically just drawing a shape on top of your model is all that you're doing and then you can come in here and you can turn that on and off um, by clicking the little eye because you put that on its own layer so that's definitely an option the nice thing about this is it gives you kind of some uh, some different ways to come in here and adjust the pattern fills that you put in here so you can kind of move all of these around or you can kind of adjust their rotation you can adjust their scale so but one of the problems with this is in addition to the fact that you have to come in here and you have to manly manually put everything in here which isn't really a big deal if you've got a little model like this but once that starts getting big that starts getting problematic but the other issue is this isn't dynamic meaning if I come in here and I move this wall in my SketchUp model, so let's say I go to my working view and I decide this wall needs to move, you know, 24 inches this way. And then I save my model and then I go back to layout and I update my model reference, that wall's gonna move and your hatching isn't. So you can see how this hatching is just kind of a dumb hatch in the sense that it doesn't move with things that you change in your model. So there's definitely problems with doing it this way. Um, that being said, I mean, if you just need a quick hatch, you know, this is definitely one way to do that. So, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that back out. 
Um, that's not really the way that I want to do that for right now. So the second way you can do this is you can actually apply materials to the back side of these walls. So like if I go back to my floor plan view for example, right now I've got this uh, style in here that's just my line weight style. So, so right now this is set to not show any shading or materials. Well what we can do is we can apply a material to the back side of these walls that'll show up in layout. So, and I've already done a little bit of this, but basically what you can do is you can, once you get these walls kind of sectioned, if you remember everything in SketchUp has a front side and a back side. So in this case, what I've done is I've come in here and I've applied a material to the back side of these walls. And SketchUp has these kind of built in in the pattern section, but you can apply like the aluminum material to the back side of these walls if you want to. So I could come in and I could paint this kind of hatch pattern on this back side. And you can see how when I kind of zoom in, you can see the material in here. And then you can set your style to show materials. And you can see how that's going to show your hatch pattern in here. So that's, that's definitely a good way to do this. The nice thing about that is A, it's dynamic. So no matter where I move this wall around to, it's going to stay hatched. But B, you can kind of adjust the way it looks by coming in here and adjusting your texture image size. So I could change this to like 4 inches by 4 inches or 6 inches by 6 inches. And I could adjust the way that that hatch works or looks by doing it that way. And then all that I'd have to do is if I just decided that I wanted that style to stay that way, I'd just leave this uh, display shaded using textures. I'd click on this to update my style and then I could save my model. And then you could come up come in here and you could update your model reference and your hatching is going to show up. So you can see how that's now showing the hatching in your model. So you can do this using materials and that's a fine way to do this. The only thing I don't like about that is you start having to manage a whole lot of different stuff. Um, you, you start having to deal with a whole bunch of different um, faces that you have to make sure get colored in properly, which again on a small model like this maybe isn't that big of a deal, but on a bigger model, you know, it's going to be more of an issue because you're just going to have to do a lot of uh, texture management and that kind of thing, but it definitely works. So that's another way to do this. And then the third way that we can do this is uh, we, this is actually a method created by Michael Brightman and it's a pretty clever way to do this. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a watermark over the top of this so that we can show the hatch pattern that way. And so what we're going to do in order to do that is first of all, you need to go find a hatch image. So in, in my case, what I did is I just Googled an image. So you're, you're gonna wanna find a hatch image. In my case, what I came up with is I came up with this image. It's basically a whole bunch of diagonal lines. Um, it's basically a diagonal hatch. It kind of matches up what I wanted. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a watermark over top of my, over top of my model in order to create my hatch pattern. And so the way that we're going to do this is first of all, we're going to create a new style. Um, I don't really want to necessarily update this style that I have right now, um, just because this is a good style that I have in here for creating my line weights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a style that's kind of a good base. So in this case, this is a good base. It's got my line weights kind of the way that I want. Um, so it's kind of doing what I want. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select that style and then I'm going to click the little plus button. And what the plus button is going to do is that's going to create a new style in here that I can, um, that I can work from. So it's going to take all of the stuff from the style that I originally selected and then I can kind of work from it from there. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this and I'm going to call this JG underscore hatch watermark. So that's just going to indicate that that's my style. But so when I go into layout and I select the style for my current view, what I would do is that would show up on this list once I kind of save that. So it makes it easy to find. So make sure you kind of understand your naming conventions that you have in here. 
and uh, so just organize this in a way that you can find it well what you're gonna do is you're gonna come into the edit style settings over here in your tray and uh, you're gonna go over to this little box um, that has kind of the text in front of it and this is where you can add a watermark and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click the plus button to add a watermark and you're gonna go find that image that you downloaded and you can see how right now when you first bring that in that's gonna give you two options you can either put this in the background or you can use it as an overlay so in this case we want this to be an overlay we want it overlaid over our model and then we're gonna click the next button and so you can see how right now if I click and drag this what it's going to do is it's going to overlay it over my whole model which is not necessarily what we want because we don't want we don't want a hatch pattern over our floors and everything else we just want this to kind of show up over the walls and so what we're going to do and this is what's clever about this is you're going to click check this button for create mask and you're going to drag this little slider all the way over to image and so when you do that when you click create mask you can see how instead of this overlaying your image what it does is anywhere there's like dark line work on this image you can see how it's kind of blocking out your model and so what that means is now instead of it showing an image it's basically using the image as a mask over your model in order to hide some things and so we're gonna go ahead and drag that all the way over here to image and that means that there's no transparency on our watermark and then we're gonna click the next button again and what we want to do is it's gonna give you three different options it's gonna um, ask for if you want this stretched, tiled or positioned we're gonna select tiled because what tiled's gonna do is you can see how when I drag this um, it'll allow me to adjust dynamically kinda of the size of the way that this looks so you can see how if I drag this to the left then these little um, hatch marks get smaller if I drag it to the right they get bigger so this and you can adjust this in a minute so just kind of set this somewhere in the middle for right now we're gonna go ahead and click finish and so you can see how now if I zoom in on this it's basically masking over this uh, over this wall well the next thing we want to do is now that this is in here kind of creating our mask we're gonna adjust the way our faces look so if you remember if you click in here and you display if you click in here and you use this uh, display shaded using all the same you can see how you can see the front side and the back side of your walls they're kind of shaded and so one thing that's kind of important is making sure that all of your walls have a back side um, facing inward because what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the way the back color works so we're gonna tell this the back side color for all of our walls needs to be a black color so you can see how when I click that black color what this is doing is that saying okay all of the back sides of my walls need to be black instead of the gray color that's kind of a default for a SketchUp model so you can see how I'm dragging this all the way down and uh, just kinda for your benefit if I say don't display watermarks and then I look in here you can see how basically what this is doing is this is coloring all the back sides of something black and the front sides all stay white so and I'm gonna click back on my line weight walls dark just to get back to my camera view but now oh and that's one important thing that I should have done is when you add your water when you add your watermark you wanna make sure you hit save so whenever you make a change to your style you wanna make sure you click on this to update your settings so and then I'm gonna do the same thing I'm just gonna set this to kinda of show the front and back faces I'm gonna click this down and then I'm gonna click update and so now what we can do is we can take this and we can apply it as its own layer and layout so all I have to do is I just have to add a scene and in this case what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call this we'll call this hatch walls so this is its own scene that we can then overlay in layout so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this I'm gonna come over here to layout so once you've saved your file what you can do is you can come in here and come over to layout and all you're gonna do is you're just going to um, once you've saved your file you want to right click and you want to make sure you update your model reference um, in order that it so that it updates to the newest version but all you're gonna do is you're gonna click the little drop down and you're gonna click hatch walls 
And then for some reason, this kind of jumps around. I'm not really sure why, but we're just gonna kind of use the nudge function on our keyboard to move it back. So I'm just holding the shift key for the big moves and then um, let up on the shift key when you wanna do the small moves. And so what you're gonna be able to do now is, um, if you, if you look right now, this comes in and this is set as a raster image. And so what that means is it's bringing in the, the um, shading but it's not necessarily bringing in the line work. So if I was to set this to vector, for example, um, vector rendering is faster, but it doesn't necessarily bring in the complex styles. Um, if you set it to raster, what it's gonna do is it's gonna render kind of the style in here, but it's not necessarily rendering the line weight. So what you wanna do is you wanna click this drop down and you wanna click hybrid, which this is gonna tell you it's gonna take longer to render and that's okay, go ahead and click okay. And then you can see how what that does is that's bringing in kind of our line weights. Um, so it's got the line around the edge and it's also rendering the uh, hatching inside your walls. And the nice thing about doing it this way with the watermarks is uh, that basically means that basically means that now if I go into SketchUp and I move a wall around, like for example, if I come in here and I move this wall kind of back where it was before when we first started. So if I click in here, move this wall back and I save my model and then I come over to layout. Now that my model's been saved and I right click and I update my model reference, what that's gonna do is that's gonna move your wall but it's gonna keep the hatching. So you can adjust the size of your hatching by adjusting the size of your watermark, but then whenever you move a wall, because the watermark is over your whole model, it dynamically kind of resizes. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. If you liked this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.